Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today it's time for more mild controversy because I am back with a whole host of unpopular One Piece opinions from you wonderful Grand Fleet members. Some of which I agree with and some of which I think you're absolutely insane, but that's the beauty of unpopular opinions. And if you're wondering how you can become part of videos like this, then all you need to do is subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will result in regular One Piece content being uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. But more importantly, it will also keep you up to date with our community section and maybe one day you too could be famous like McDurpold's here, who says, Ace isn't actually an interesting character. He's only really relevant because of Marineford. Mm, shots fired by McDurpold's there. Although I do agree, weirdly enough, Ace only became super interesting after his death with the flashback and everything, and yeah, it's very poor guy. And also just an important FYI, before we hop into things, today is going to be a sponsored video, the proceeds of which are going to continue to pay for closed captions here at the Grand Line Review, and guess who our sponsor is? Hello and welcome to the Rage Shadow Legends ad, your source for legends performing raids, presumably in the shadows. It's a free to play mobile RPG that has nothing to do with One Piece, except that it does, because look, here they are quite clearly on a pirate ship sailing through the Grand Line. It's canon now. And who are they, you ask? Well, Raid Sports a fairly ridiculous roster of 500 champions, that's what they are by the way, champions, each of whom come equipped with fancy skill trees and millions of artifacts to find and equip, ensuring that no two champions will ever be the same, except for these two, which is is a bit awkward. And I really love how absurdly detailed they are, especially this one, which I enjoy for um, personal reasons. And if you happen to be super picky and those 500 champions aren't good enough for you, then well, you've got some nerve, but never fear because they're bringing out new ones. And I like this guy in particular, who reminds me of that horned lizard from the <laughs> meme. Raid have also released the Artifact Forge, where you can save time and craft artifacts directly, as well as a whole new advanced quest system with allegedly amazing rewards. Plus they're also developing the Doom Tower, which both looks and sounds rather ominous. So other than the end of this video, what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special link things, and if you are a new player, then you will get 100,000 silver, three ancient shards, two clan boss keys, and one free champion. All of which can be found in your inbox, conveniently pictured right here with the arrow and everything. All of that and more awaits you, so good luck, Shadow Raiders. Better question though, what am I waiting for? Hit me with some unpopular opinions. Big Mom was always comedic yet menacing and competent character. Somehow people are arguing if she's the butt of the joke too much on the recent chapters, while I believe it's just to show how the Straw Hats are more competent and confident than ever. And all right, I'm going to assume that that first competent was supposed to be incompetent, maybe, tell me if I'm wrong, but we're starting out with one that I agree with almost entirely. When I was on the Reverie a couple of weeks ago, there was actually a big discussion about this and what it kind of boils down to is whether or not you actually like the Big Mom character. If you do, then her comedic usage isn't too bothersome, but if you don't and you want her to be something she's not, well, then you're just going to be perpetually disappointed. And I really do think that what Wano is doing is just highlighting the incredible flaws of Big Mom that have always been present. And when I say flaws, I mean character flaws, which to me makes her a very interesting figure. You know, without her crew, for lack of a better term, to babysit her, Big Mom is capable of being outwitted and outplayed with relative ease, yet there is still still nothing powerful enough to bring her down. And I find that quite terrifying. But I know that this opinion is unpopular because we also got a whole host of other responses like, Big Mom is easily the most disappointing Yonko. She makes them seem like a joke, which I find very interesting. Apparently both sides of the Big Mom argument believe that they hold the minority opinion. And we can go back and forth like this for a while, so we will. Big Mom being used for comedic effect doesn't affect her value nor depreciate how much of a threat she is. But I do need to be completely honest. I included this comment out of sheer Australian nepotism because I know Joy Girl and she provided me with this delicious birthday cake, which also ties in very nicely to the Big Mom discussion because I am now craving cake. Not sure if unpopular, but I miss the quirky fighters from pre-time skip. The normal humans without devil fruit powers are a different race from a strange island, but are still weird. Using hypnosis, ramen noodles, Skypea dials, things like that. And I think the new world still does have its fairly quirky fighters, although I do take your point about prominent characters generally being devil fruit users nowadays. And yeah, there's not not a lot of opportunity for figures like Wanzi to appear anymore, especially not during the Yonko saga. Although I think Dressrosa did a fairly good job of having quirky fighters. There were a whole ton of the Don Quixote family who weren't fruit users and still just super weird like Dellinger and Lao G. They're definitely the minority though. In conclusion, I also miss weird powers and I really don't enjoy that everything seems to be so boxed in with either devil fruits or Haki in the modern era. 
Unpopular opinion, Teach is way smarter than everyone thinks. Yeah, Blackbeard is a pretty sinister mofo. I mean, he looks and acts like an idiot and it's hard to explain verbally, but there is such a distinct difference between his idiocy and say Luffy's idiocy. Where Luffy seems genuinely foolish, Blackbeard to me has always felt like a bit of an act. Although to be fair, the two are still quite similar because Blackbeard is also the kind of guy who likes to take the opportunity to enjoy and revel in life in addition to accomplishing his goals. But there's no way he's gotten this far without being at least somewhat intelligent or at least having whatever the One Piece world equivalent of a cute street smarts is. I think Thriller Bark is actually a really good arc with hilarious comedy, epics, scenes, and an amazing backstory with Brooke. The reason it gets so much negativity is because it follows any slobby. And that's fair enough. I would also add that in addition to any slobby, Thriller Bark also came directly before Sabadi Archipelago. You know, the arc that introduced the supernovas and new admirals, Silver's Ray Lee, and saw the complete defeat of the Straw Hats. So Thriller Bark is very unfortunately sandwiched by these absurdly iconic arcs in One Piece, and yeah, I do feel kind of bad for it. Thriller Bark is more along the lines of what a classic One Piece adventure is, and I think it is flat out one of the funniest arcs in the series. Perhaps if it had a less polarizing antagonist, that probably would have made all the difference, but instead we got Gekko Moria, a man whose very existence is also an unpopular opinion. Some anime filler arcs make the world of One Piece feel more alive, rather than just a conventional straight line from island to island. Mmm, yes, unpopular opinion detected. I obviously disagree, but most people know my opinion of the anime, and I guess it's hard to argue with the very basic idea that filler does provide stuff and people, and stuff and people make the world feel much larger because now there would be more stuff and people in it. A lot of the times it's more when it comes down to contradicting the world itself when it becomes a problem, like introducing living dragons during the Warship Island arc, and then having everyone be surprised that gasp dragons exist when they get to Punk Hazard. To me, that just makes the world feel clunky and inconsistent. Still, I will take anime filler arcs over filler embedded in canon material any day of the week, so go ahead ahead and expand the world, I guess. Maybe eventually we'll find another G8. The One Piece is not real. A very unpopular opinion in reality. However, I dare say this is the popular opinion of the denizens of the One Piece world. Even after Whitebeard claimed on live television that it existed, I think most people are still very much convinced that it's a legend. Although remember, most of the world's citizens apparently don't even know for a fact that devil fruits exist, so their minds have a long, long way to go before accepting the One Piece. Unpopular opinion. Diaz Drake stretch Stretch Man Apu and Hawkins are all sellouts. Interesting, I have to assume that this commenter is an anime only watcher and is going off the idea that all three bent the knee to Kaido. And without giving away any spoilers, I just think you definitely need to read the manga. You're right in perhaps one case. The other two though, well, yeah, just once again, read the manga. There are certain circumstances that conflict with this whole sellout narrative. Unpopular opinion. Hawkins is top 25 strongest characters in One Piece and is also stronger than Hancock. Wow, I feel like this came out of nowhere. I don't even know how to begin to scale that. He definitely means Hawkins, right? As in Basil Hawkins, not like Hawkeye Mihawk. And what does a fight between Hawkins and Hancock even look like? One sits there shooting Mero Mero beams and the other sits there playing with his deck. So actually with that in mind, I suppose Hancock probably wins. And as for this whole top 25 business, that's actually a pretty fun claim. I think saying things like top five and top 10 strongest characters is pretty boring because they're quite obvious and mostly inarguable choices. But what happens when you get to say number 23? Then things get pretty exciting because all of the big guys have been assigned already. But I am going to try and confirm this as an unpopular opinion though, because if I were to ever make a list of the top five strongest characters in One Piece, I have a very strong preemptive feeling that Hawkins will not be present. Top 50, maybe, but the lower end of that top 50. Zoro is the most useless member. The only thing he contributes is strength. He doesn't even have another role other than swordsman. He always gets lost, which causes trouble. Most of the other crewmates have a role other than fighting and do not cause as much trouble as Zoro. He's still my favorite though, lol. Yeah, I don't know about this one. I think Luffy causes far more trouble than Zoro. But there is both some agreeance and disagreements for me here. I don't know if either of those terms are actual words, but I use them. I see Zoro's role as more than just a guy who fights things, although I will admit that that's mostly the work that gets assigned to him, which to be fair, he's very good at. But as for general utility, yeah, he's less useful than crew members with more technically based skills. But as I've said in a couple of videos now, there are some very key moments in the series where Zoro has been essential from a non-combatant perspective.
objective, and that is basically to act as a vice captain if and when Luffy falters. Because Luffy isn't perfect, and from time to time that will happen, at which point the slack is picked up by Zoro. Luffy leads the crew from the front, and Zoro leads the crew from behind, which also helps him to get not so lost because he has people to follow. Pedro's death was somewhat unnecessary. The fact that no one died in the present made Ace's death hard hitting. Now Oda is increasing the death toll in present One Piece, and if it's as unnecessary, in quotation marks for reasons, I assume the user is quoting themselves from using the word unnecessary earlier, whatever. And if it's as unnecessary as Pedro's, I'd rather no one die. All right, a few different thoughts here. Firstly, I think Pedro's death was very, very necessary. If the Straw Hat strolled on into the territory of an emperor with just a handful of people and escaped entirely unharmed, then that probably would have been the biggest load of BS in One Piece history. There needed to be a sense of consequence for their actions, and Pedro was a pretty perfect vehicle for that. The biggest thing he does though is he serves Carrot. Because weirdly enough, you know who would have been a completely pointless character if Pedro didn't die? Well, that would be Carrot. Without Pedro, she would have just been a cute bunny thing along for a gratuitous ride, but instead we got to feel some serious emotion. And as someone who is definitely in the camp that Oda needs to let more characters stay dead, yeah, to me, Pedro serves a very rare purpose. Not like that pesky pound who ended up being alive. Yeah, that's right, spoilers for something inconsequential that the anime will never animate. Unpopular opinion. I don't really like the arc that Sanji is introduced in. I am shocked and appalled. I'd also love to know why. For most people, Baratie seems to be that first massive step up for One Piece because it has something for everyone, really. Zoro fans get to see Zoro versus Mihawk, Sanji fans get to see Sanji in action, his backstory and joining the crew, and that's everyone, right? In this world, there are only two kinds of people, those of Team Green and those of Team Yellow. But I've even heard a shocking amount of people say that Baratie is their favorite arc in all of One Piece, which is a bit of a stretch for me, but I can see it because it has a grand total of like zero flaws. There's nothing I dislike about Baratie, so I am genuinely curious as to why you don't. The Reverie arc is damaging to Wano. I care too much about everything that isn't fighting Kaido. <laughs> and yeah, welcome to One Piece, I guess. Funnily enough, you could probably make the same argument about a lot of arcs. Like for example, Ace versus Blackbeard is ruining Thriller Bark because I care about that cool event more than I do zombies. Or Kaido versus the Kid Alliance is ruining Whole Cake Island because all I care about is Kaido. And then Reverie is ruining Wano because I am fickle and I don't care about Kaido anymore. I care about Sabo, Admirals and such. So I get where you're coming from. Oda has this really masterful way of actually making you care about events that are happening outside of our main characters, which is so, so rare for a shonen manga. So it is only natural to crave that deliberately denied experience and information. Luffy will die really soon due to gears and injections. So at first I thought this user might be commenting on Luffy's well-documented drug addiction, but then I realized that they were referring to Ivankov. I want to say you're not wrong though. I don't like the chances of Luffy being alive by the end of One Piece because he has a whole grand fleet of death flags surrounding him. A whole 30 minute episode only takes up about five to 10 minutes in the actual One Piece universe. Very unpopular opinion here because a whole episode arguably takes up far less in universe time. In fact, there are certain cases where entire episodes have progressed maybe two minutes of in-world time, sometimes less. And no, I do not count flashbacks and recap in that time allocation. To be fair though, the manga is pretty similar, especially in Wano. There are big time jumps and then there are times when we focus on specific events in minute detail. Logia users are always naked. They just make themselves look like they wear clothes. <laughs> Oh, this doesn't belong here. Surely this is not an unpopular opinion at all. Either way, we aren't going to top it, so this seems like a great place to end with that thought forever burned into my mind. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.